One male and one female in Darwin is more than sufficient to populate the entire top end of the Northern Territory. The best thing is to get rid of them, get a big stick and hit them at it. The practice of uh, going out and getting one of these things and putting them into a billy, boiling it down and eating the residue, I think is absolutely repulsive. When I'm driving a car, I have no hesitation at running over them whatsoever. I couldn't do without them. They're friends. <laughs> I can recall quite vividly seeing cane grubs early in the morning. The beetle used to fly out early in the morning and land on the cane. The cane was weighted down with beetles. Trees surrounding the cane farms weighted down with beetles. Sometimes farmers would cut round about uh, 800 ton to 1,000 ton, and the following year wouldn't cut a ton at all hardly. The situation really became desperate in the early 1930s due to the combined effect of grab attack and the uh, effect of the depression on the world price of sugar. So uh, something had to be done to uh, control of the grabber for all possible. And of course the farmers never let up on their demands on the sugar experiment station staff to do something about it. Well in 1932 there was a world conference of sugar technologists held in Puerto Rico and we were represented at that conference by the assistant director of the sugar experiment stations, Mr. Arthur Bell. I believe this evidence shows that the buffo marinus, or cane toad, can be effectively used as a biological control of the grayback grub and beetle. And I strongly advocate the effective use of this amphibian immigrant, which is doing its full share of benefit to our sugar industry. And Arthur Bell brought back the suggestion that perhaps we could consider introducing the toad into this country from Hawaii. Montgomery was our entomologist at the time, and he was sent over to Hawaii to uh, get a colony of toads together and bring them back to Australia and establish a colony in North Queensland. This he did very effectively. Over the long period, of course, it was necessary to keep moisture up to the toads in their crate to keep them alive. They couldn't feed them during the two-week trip that they would be uh, experiencing getting down to Sydney from Hawaii. And then, of course, another two days to get them to uh, Moringa in North Queensland before they could be put into a pond, into an environment that they could relish. Montgomery treated them very, very well. He built a very elaborate pool at Moringa with running water to uh, encourage them to breathe, and they responded to his treatment, and they began to breathe uh, very vigorously. Yes, I got vivid memories when the toads were first brought to this place. They were brought here by a fellow called Neust in a couple of dishes. There was about 40 toads in, in number in all, and they were released in this particular spot over there. And of course, my dad was an Irishman, and uh, he was very, very pleased, and he was jubilant about the whole affair, and uh, more so that he said this, and I quote, we've got these bloody grubs by the balls this time, and we'll go on to bigger and brighter things. But tragically, we didn't have the grubs by the balls, they had us by the balls. Plexus is a sexual act where the male grasps the female, but of course first he's got to get his female. And after the rains, when you have big areas of temporary water, fresh water, the males will gather around the ponds and they'll call. 
and the call, of course, attracts the female. And it goes something like this. And I suppose the female picks the best or the sweetest of those calls. And when she approaches close, the male will then grasp her into amplexus. And he does that by getting his forearms, which you'll notice are very, very strong, and he pushes them into the side just under the ribs. And on the thumb, there is a nuptial pad. This nuptial pad is very, very sticky, so that when he pushes the um, thumbs and his hands into the side of her abdominal cavity, the grip is very, very strong and firm. Of course, it's important that the grip be strong so that he doesn't fall off and so that other males, too, can't push him off. She takes him into the water and she exudes the eggs in long strands. And as they come out, the male releases sperm into the water, which then fertilises the eggs. And these eggs are either wrapped around vegetation, but usually it's just left to float in the water. One cane toad female can lay up to 40,000 eggs in a summer. That's a large number of eggs. The theory going that they need the 40,000 just so two can survive to replace the female and the male. But if you see ponds where cane toads have been breeding, more than two survive. The sides of the ponds are just black with young cane toads. And from what I can see, a large number of those survive. The eggs stay in the water and then they start dividing and eventually they start to look like small tadpoles within the egg sac. The tadpoles, when they get sufficiently developed, start wriggling and they rupture the egg sac and they go into the water as tadpoles. And the tadpole is a very distinctive tadpole. It's glossy black. No other Australian frog has a glossy black tadpole. And then in the water for about four, five weeks, it develops, the back legs come out, and then finally the front legs. Then the tail is reabsorbed and they move onto the land as small toads. Well, they've been here for 50 years or a bit more. And look, there's just millions of them in this river. There's certainly no shortage of cane toads in the area. They have a tremendous success rate. They can lay tadpoles in small puddles, 15% seawater, clear running rivers like this, just about anywhere. Equally interesting is that these tadpoles, if you look at them very carefully, some of them are beginning to get legs. And they do that at a very, very small body size. Uh, the native tadpoles have to get much, much larger than these little fellas and so they have to stay in the water a little bit longer than what a cane toad can. So cane toads get in fast, big numbers, they're out fast, and it aids their colonisation to a tremendous extent.